right, welcome back to the show. I'm Sam Sorbo. Thanks so much for joining me at mojo50.com. If you want to see the, the show and video, just uh, hop on over to YouTube or my website, samsorbo.com, and take a look at uh, my videos there. Uh, so we're going to move on to this um, unemployment uh, figures that we have and um, what we're seeing in the marketplace um, and the government's input on that. So first, first I want to talk about um, Representative David Schweikert, who uh, noticed that if you pay people to stay home, uh, strangely, they don't go out and find work. In fact, um, the Babylon Bee mimicked, mimicked that statement uh, in a very funny way. I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, the David Schweikert, who's a representative from Arizona, told Breitbart News on Sunday that April's jobs reports number was a function of paying Americans not to work. So the number came out and apparently the U.S. economy added only 266,000 266, jobs in April, which of course we are in recovery. And so we want that number to be much higher because we want people to get back to work. We want the economy to get running again. I was out uh, yesterday and just, just looking in my area, which by the way, my area is you know, by and large thriving because I live in Florida. And yet I noticed uh, several large stores, the, um, the, it was completely vacant and they'd taken the, um, the big lettering off the front of the building. They're, they're just, they're done. They just closed down. Uh, and I've noticed that again and again. In fact, uh, we went out the other day to, um, to a place where we've been before and it's actually a new place because the old place shut down. COVID has had disastrous effects. And if we don't get the economy running again, it's the, the effects will be longer and longer term. So uh, 266,000 jobs in April, the unemployment rate ticked up to 6.1% and the labor, uh, this is according to the labor department. So Schweiker told Breitbart News last Sunday that April's jobs report was a function of we're paying Americans not to work. And if you do the calculation, then it's true. Our unemployment pays more than your, your average minimum wage. Um, and it pays actually more than even the minimum wage that they, that they want minimum wage to be, which is $15 an hour, which is really a very conceited uh, uh, clandestine way to increase minimum wage. To, to sort of surreptitiously force an increase in minimum wage because now businesses, they wanna get back to business, you need workers. How are you gonna hire somebody? Well, you've got a competition. You're actually now competing with the government to get people to come to work. Now it's one thing if it's fair, but the government is using our money to pay workers not to work. And that does us a disservice. The government is actively working against us, not for us. You can't argue that the government is for the individual when it's very clear that they are not for the community at large. And it's the government's role to be for the community at large, not the individual, it's upside down. Schweikert said, quote, I hear the comments saying people are fearful to work due, due to the coronavirus, yet I cannot find any properly put together data that actually says that. He said, I believe that to be more anecdotal for folklore. Of course it is. Where are the studies? Nobody's asking to see studies. Then he says, we do actually have data of people saying, why should I take the $15 an hour job when I'm almost making that much staying at home. Why indeed? Henninger of the Wall Street Journal examined the impact of uh, President Joe Biden's proposed expansion of, quote, middle-class entitlements. Henninger said that Joe Biden's policies are proposing to replace the traditional model of individual striving to make a living to move ahead, fulfill the American dream with this idea of middle-class entitlements that are supposed to come from somewhere, 
where you have all the necessities of life provided for you. That's the UBI, the universal basic income. They're not your responsibility anymore. Someone else is going to take care of that for you. Don't worry. Pat, pat, pat. You don't have to stress getting up the next day to make sure there's food on the table at night. But unfortunately, that erodes personal responsibility and the self-growth that's associated with uh, a, a pursuit. It's, it's, it, it actively works against the individual. We are geared to compete. We are geared to strive. There, okay. There are a very few people who don't have ambition. But that's on them. That's not on me. That's not on you. That's not on the government. Well, it's funny because it's so weird that I find myself so often now strangely sort of supporting a leftist viewpoint. And, and don't get me wrong, it, it, it has nothing to do with uh, me being leftist. It's just that their positions on things now strangely coincide with my position. So for instance, the leftists didn't want schools to open. I also think schools are bad for children by and large. I know that's a terrible position to take. However, it's true. They've got CRT, critical race theory in our schools, and they've got um, um, pornography in our schools and, and sex trafficking of our children in our schools. And uh, they're not teaching the kids anything worthwhile and they're teaching them the ultimate blather. I mean, it's ridiculous. So yeah. And then here, you know, the, it, it, here it is again. Uh, it's middle-class entitlements because why? Because that's what the government has taught students to expect. That's the other reason I, should, I say we shouldn't be sending kids to school. Because they're learning to be little socialists and they will grow up to vote for bigger government. And they will grow up to believe the promises that politicians make. And that's insanity. So yeah, okay. Uh, so moving on, this, this I find so funny. And if you don't get the Babylon Bee, I highly recommend it. Uh, you just subscribe to their um, emails and you get emails and they, they're just hilarious. Shocking, study finds paying people not to work makes people not want to work. <laughs> this, this just in, breaking news. I just love it. And then in the middle of the article, they write, they quote somebody, um, we could not possibly have foreseen this. <laughs> That's how government works. We can't possibly foresee stuff. Um, at publishing time, they write, Experts had recommended raising the minimum wage to $1 million an hour to incentivize people to go back to work, foreseeing no negative consequences from this course of action. Yeah, it won't kill business. It's absurd. All right, that was my little, my little stroke of humor for the day. <laughs> Moving on. Um, this is off of an opinion piece by Freeman up at uh, Wall Street Journal uh, titled Springtime for Bureaucrats. And um, this is uh, another new report, but this one is about the federal workforce that is seemingly very, very well paid. And you notice none of them were laid off during the coronavirus pandemic. We continued to pay all of these people, these bureaucrats who actually, I love it in the article, he refers to them as non-producing. Um, I, oh, well, I'll find it eventually, but um, they're not the producers, right? We, the people, are the producers. They're the users and regulators, and yet they're unaffected uh, by and large. Their, their, their finances are by and large unaffected by COVID. According to the Office of Personnel Management, the OPM, right, it, which this is a, an agency that keeps and stores and tallies information about federal employees. Um, the average federal employee now has a salary, excluding benefits, of 90, 
thousand dollars a year, ninety thousand five hundred and ten dollars a year to be exact. And this is as of the end of December of 2020. In May of 2020, U.S. Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics found that the annual average annual wage across all occupations in the U.S. was fifty-six thousand three hundred and ten dollars. So going to work for the government pays you a premium of close to $40,000 a year or 40% more than what you're making right now, almost 50% more. In fairness, uh, he writes, it's not exactly apples to apples because the federal workforce is, of course, different from the one that supports it. That's, that's where it is. That's where he wrote it. <laughs> A 2017 report from the Congressional Budget Office noted that on the whole, federal workers tend to be older, they're more educated, they're more concentrated on professional occupations than private sector workers. And so that's why they, you know, they could argue that the public sector, sorry, the private sector workforce is paid on average less. I don't know, I don't know that that is such a, a kind of a, an such a tremendous influence, let's put it that way, maybe slightly, but I don't see why that would be uh, of great import. Um, and so the CBO generated uh, this comparison between public and private compensation, but um, wanted to sort of clarify that there that is uh, a little bit of a difference. Uh, it, it tried to account for differences because of the level of education, the years of work experience. So yeah, okay, they've worked their way up the ladder. So they have higher salaries, but aren't there plenty of people who work in, in um, public uh, unions, union jobs that um, are not experienced? Like, I don't know that that's really such a mitigating factor. Um, overall, the federal government paid 17% more in total compensation than it would have if average compensation had been comparable with that in the private sector. So they went back and they did more research and tried to balance out all the factors. And the government still pays more than the private sector, which is what I was just talking about with minimum wage and unemployment benefits. The government pays more than the private sector with our money. It is in competition with us and we are paying it to put us out of business. I, I, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. And it's like a runaway train. It's like, it's like people aren't paying attention and, no, and they're not doing anything about it. And, and we're making jokes about it, which I have to say, the jokes are funny and yet, and yet, you know, um, so they've accounted for the certain observable characteristics of the workers and they still say the government, here's the thing, the government doesn't pay marginally more, it's 17% more, 17% more. And this is, by the way, this is a government that is bargaining and negotiating with a public sector union that is in government. Wait till you hear the next piece of this. So I thought this was funny. For readers considering moving out of the productive segment of the economy, could there ever be a better time to be a Fed? Seriously. Oh, well, if you can't beat them, join them. No, beat them, beat them. The Biden administration is excusing top officials. This is off of um, a, a separate report. It's on Axios, but um, it's quoted here in uh, James Freeman's article. The Biden administration is excusing top officials from ethics rules that would otherwise restrict their work with large labor unions that previously employed them. Federal records show. Labor's sizable personnel presence in the administration is driving policy. And the president's appointment of top union officials to senior posts give those unions powerful voices in the federal bureaucracy, even at the cost of strictly adhering 
to his own stringent ethics standards. Oh, they're stringent, all right. They're very stringent, these ethics standards, except nobody cares about them and nobody adheres to them. In March, the OPM waived ethics rules for its director of intergovernmental affairs, Alethea Prido, who had been the top lobbyist for the American Federation of Government Employees. They're all in bed with each other and they're working actively against we the people. We have a government that is now actively working against we the people with our money. We are funding them and we're funding all of their, we're not just like paying them to work against us. We're actually giving them the money to invest in competition that they run. It says here, absent a waiver, Biden's ethics pledge would bar her from working on issues on which she lobbied. But no more. They gave her a waiver. So there's the, so the ethics code, they put it in, very strict ethics code, but we're just gonna give people waivers because we don't really care about the code because we're Democrats and we're hypocrites. And yes, I know there are Republican hypocrites. All right, now I'm focused on the Dems because they're the ones who hate America. The other guys, the other hypocrites are just in it for themselves, typically. I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really, I, I'm really struggling with this. Honestly, didn't know that this story was going to be quite as, uh, well, yes, I did. I, but, you know, I, apparently I'm emotional today, so deal with it. Okay. One more, um, one, one, one more, let's see, we'll do another email. Uh, this is from uh, somebody who watched on YouTube, obviously, I, well, maybe not obviously. I had a look at the math document you mentioned. I certainly hope any doctor who operates on me was able to avoid woke math and actually learn the difference between facts and cultural expressions. Yeah, yeah, you would hope so, right? But I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but um, the American Medical Association and I just I just put this up on Facebook and Twitter. The AMA has now said that they are going to move from a meritocracy to uh, to uh, social justice, critical race, um, accommodating uh, criteria. So I just I just tweeted and and commented. Um, hey, you know, your brain surgeon nearly flunked out of medical school, but it's okay because he's a black transgender. So you're good to go. They're moving away from meritocracy because who cares how successful you are as long as you're the right color, as long as you're the right gen or claim to be the right gender. This is crazy. This is absolutely absurd. Hi, I'm Sam Sorbo. Thanks for watching me here. If you want more great content, go to sorbos.locals.com and don't forget to subscribe with the button below. Thanks for watching.